Hello and welcome to another Tall Ship Tuesday. My name is Caroline. And I'm Jonathan. Providence's captain. And this <laughs> week we are bringing back an old favorite to the channel, Coffee with the Captain. Today we're sitting down and talking about what it takes to sail in a squall. So for those of you who don't know, a squall is a foul weather event at sea, and in such an event it's important to have a strong captain ready to take charge and bring the ship to safer waters. So we brought in Providence's captain to talk about his experiences. So Jonathan, what is your very first experience that you can remember of sailing at sea when you hit a squall? As of late, recent, the worst squall, short term squall is when we were in uh, right over in the wharf last year we were working out of the dc wharf and the winds are just they're it's protected but they're just swirling around like crazy mm -hmm. and so it, it's really hard to maneuver the boat and get it where you want to and you've got a boatload of passengers so in that regard thinking about the safety of others i mean the crew is one thing but then having 30 passengers, passengers on board mm -hmm. You're just like, you know, please <laughs> get me in for a safe landing mm -hmm. and, you know, get the, get the passengers on board before the deluge happens. It's, so in an uh, event like that, when you're working with passengers and on a ship like Providence, what kind of things can you do to prepare if you know that you might run into a squall? You know, of course, the first thing you gotta do is get the, if you have sails up, you gotta get the sails in. Mm -hmm. And that's the main priority. And then hopefully, well, the sails either go to ribbons, shred to ribbons, <laughs> or you know, you get them in in time, one or the other. Like a really strong, and, you know, furl, keeping them nice and, and safe so they're not whipping around in the wind if you can help it. Yeah, just yeah. having them secure and put away on a smaller sailboat, you know, you know, you'd just be dousing sail and yeah. throwing it, you know, rolling it up or throwing it down in the in the forepeak. Uh, but with something like Providence, it really takes a whole team to do. Yeah, well, the head sails you can get down in a hurry because mm -hmm. we just cast the halyard and there's a downhaul and you get it down super fast and you, and you can tuck them away. But like the topsail, even if you take in the topsail, you've still got like you know the dove wings and you still have sail area up. So it's better than if the whole sail is extended mm -hmm. for when you're actually using it. Like the next phase is in a more sustained squall. Or, or even a five minute squall, mm -hmm. you're, you're gonna be running under bare poles and the boat itself turns into a sail. The bow is gonna spin uh, away from the wind. So you're almost just inherently always gonna be running mm -hmm. with the wind behind you at that point. And you know, you're- <laughs> Handling just the trying to control, tiller as best you can. Well, you're controlling and... the boat just like you would be sailing. Mm -hmm. um, but you know it's just it's just a lot of violence going on speaking naturally. of is there any like really harrowing experiences that come to mind or some weird tales that come from a time that you were in a squall well <laughs> a sustain a squall with the sustained right. heavy weather following was on the lady washington so it's, it's the state of washington goodwill ship oh, which yes. is which is still operating back then the tall ship world was more wild west Mm -hmm. stuff there was you weren't required to wear harnesses aloft the captain he knew there was a gale coming mm. and it was nighttime and we were in Port Angeles and we were gonna sail across the Strait of Juan de Fuca and go into the San Juan Islands in Washington State and it was like 8 o'clock at night he knew there was a gale coming and we were and he still set sail oh, no. and so when it did hit uh, it was the first time I was on a on a tall ship, mm -hmm. and they just didn't even think twice about. <laughs> I don't even think I'd been aloft, <laughs> and they're sending us, you know, green greeny people aloft, and there's a few, you know, sort of veteran sailors up there, and you know, no and, harness, just no. climbing up, and, and well, there was holding one, on for dear life. <laughs> well, there's one guy that had a harness, and he was embarrassed, so he put the harness on underneath his sweatpants or something. <laughs> so they, you know, they'd no one would give him a bunch of, you know, stuff about it when he got back down on the deck. So anyhow, we, we, we got in and we got to the San Juans and then it was all flat water and the storm just was still sustained with high 40 knot winds. And, and then we set sail and sailed on flat water. 
Well, so, I'm glad yeah. you made it through. That is quite an experience, and I'm glad that we've got um, a little bit better safety techniques on ships like Providence today. That would be that'd be pretty scary. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Jonathan, for joining us on this Tall Ship Tuesday. It was lovely to have you. And if you enjoyed seeing Jonathan, uh, feel free to let us know down in the comments below and any other Coffee with the Captain topics you might want to see next. So thank you all for joining us and the Tall Ship Providence Foundation on this Tall Ship Tuesday. If you like this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. We put out new educational videos each week about maritime history, seamanship, tall ships, and even the occasional sea shanty. Until next time, we hope to see you back again next week on another Tall Ship Tuesday.